Hello everyone and welcome back to the perfect French with Dylan. Today is the first day of the conjugation course. So for 46 days you will have one lesson a day about conjugation. In 46 days you will be able to master all the French tenses and everything about French conjugation. It is very exciting but we do have a lot of work to do. Today we are only going to review the essential for conjugation to understand all the next videos. So we are going to talk about group of verbs, how to study them, the pronoun and everything like that. There's no exercises today, it's only the introduction. All the lessons after this one are going to have exercises. So when there is an exercise, I will just put a little note on the screen to tell you what number to do. But if you follow the book, it's very easy. After each point, you have the exercise to practice and make sure you understood well. If you don't have the book yet, you can either get it on Amazon or as a PDF. Both links are in the description box. So the first thing we're going to see today is the three groups of verbs. So in French, we have three different groups of verbs. So for the first group, we have all the verbs ending in er. All of them except aller. We are going to talk about that later. But all of them except aller are in the first group. We call them the regular verbs. They are the easiest to conjugate. They do have some spelling changes that we will see, especially when we see present tense. So this group represents the majority of French verbs. For example, donner. The second group of verbs is all about verbs ending in ir. My e, not your e, okay? Remember that? Ir, the French e. And we actually have four different types of verbs ending in ir. But the second group is the group with the most of them. The three other ones are irregular, which brings me to the third group. The third group is all about irregular verbs. And of course, they are the most used in French language. So for example, we have être, to be, avoir, to have, think in English, how many times you use to be and to have during the day. Well, it's the same in French. And on top of that, they're also auxiliaries, which means that we use them to build tenses with two different verbs, such as passé composé. If you are familiar with French conjugation, you know how to build the passé composé. So it's always with être ou avoir. So as you can see, we have a lot of different types of verbs in French and they have all different spelling, different conjugation, different endings. You will understand when we'll start the conjugation tomorrow. You will see what I mean. But because of that, it's very hard to remember them. And I know that a lot of you told me that when I asked you what you wanted to know, what you needed me to explain the most. A lot of you said that you needed help to remember them, to remember how to conjugate them. So here you have to study verbs by groups. In the first chapter, so the chapter about present tense, we are going to see all the different types of verbs. And every time you will have an example and then under that you will have uh, the common verbs conjugated the same way as this verb. I'm not going to put them all on the screen every time, but it's very useful to have them. And then on top of that, on the book, if you are going to the annex and the table of verbs, you have one verb for each category. So for example, the regular verb ending in er, you have one with the full conjugation, all the conjugation that you will need, then you have the one ending in er, and then all the irregular ones. So you can always refer to that. So besides some very irregular such as être and avoir and aller as well, usually most of the verbs in French are conjugated the same way as other ones. So always remember them like that. So usually when you see a verb, you will find this verb, the main verb, in other verbs. It's the case for prendre, for example. We have apprendre, comprendre. You have more examples in the book. So those verbs are conjugated the exact same way as prendre. Others have the same endings, such as venir and tenir. They are both irregular, but they have the exact same ending, just the V and the T change. Others have very little in common, but they use 
the same conjugation and they have the same irregularities, such as offrir and ouvrir. So always study by group of verbs and by similar verbs. Of course, since we are talking about conjugation, we are going to see the pronoun in every single lesson. We call them the French subject pronouns. I'm not going to review them every time, so here they are. We have je, or j apostrophe, when the verb starts with a voyelle or a silent h. Tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, elle. So as you can see, we have tu and vous, and they both have the meaning you in English. So tu in French is the informal way to address someone. So you use that with a friend, a family, anybody that you know very well. Vous can be used for one person or for a few person. For example, for one person it's going to be formal and you will have to use it for your boss, people that you don't know, people that you have to show respect. But you can use vous as well when it's a few people, so if there's a group of people, you use vous. Then we have il and elle. In English they both mean they. In French, we made a very specific distinction between feminine plural and masculine plural. So, il is for masculine plural and elle is for feminine plural. But be careful that if you have a group of people and even if it's five women and one man, we are going to use il. As long as there is one man in the group, we are going to use il. Two more words. We have on and nous in French. They both mean we. Oui. So nous is used more in written French and just formal French in general, when on is more in casual French. So on is always conjugated as il and elle singular, but it has a meaning of plural. We'll see that it's going to be very important, especially in passé composé. Finally, we have the neutral it in English that we simply don't have in French. Everything has a gender, every single thing, you know, une plante, so it's a feminine. We don't have a neutral, so that's very important to understand. Everything is either il ou elle. Feminine or masculine, so it will translate to he or she, but we don't have a it. That's it for today. I hope you are ready for the next 45 days. I invite you to read the glossary. So you know exactly all the little terms that we are going to use in this course. Well, that I am going to use in this course, I guess. I will see you tomorrow for the present tense. À demain.